and welcome to our midweek uh, program. We call it the Midweek Vibes, and we are coming to you live from Amlaka Hill Chapel, Ruaka, and we are so delighted that we can share this one hour or so together. And today, our topic is very interesting. We are going to be looking at teenagers, so moms of teenagers, parents of teenagers. This is your program, and our topic will be schooling teenagers at home. And with me on set today is Carol. Carol, welcome. Please introduce yourself. Thank you very much. It's really great to be here today on Midweek Vibes, and um, uh, it's such a pleasure. My name is Carol Chakua. I am a mom. I'm a therapist, and I also work with parents. And what I do with parents is I help them develop or create an environment so that they can have, have better relationships with their children. As opposed to just fixing behavior, uh -huh. let's build relationships. And then out of the relationships, the behaviors will just come out naturally. Oh, nice. Thank you so much for coming. Karibu sana. And we have Marion with us. Marion, introduce yourself to us. Okay. Um, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, my name is Marion Jiroge. Uh, for the purposes, I'm thinking through how many identities I want to introduce. But for the Give us all, yeah, all of them. <laughs> for the purposes of this conversation, I am a mom to three young men. So my firstborn is 20 years old, and then I have teenage twin boys aged 15. They turn 15 in a few days' time. Oh. I am also a working mom, so I run a business. We have a market research company, family business, so that keeps me busy as well. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. And um, our viewers, Mamlaka Hill Chapel, and anyone joining us for the first time, I welcome you in the Mamlaka Way uh, style. And I introduce myself. I'm your host today, Reverend Maggie Mohia. I serve here at Mamlaka Hill Chapel. Now, uh, to get us starting, uh, started, and we are so uh, and happy that we have two moms on set. And our two moms will help us explore what it is like to parent teenagers, to put them school, through school through, through, during this COVID season when they have so much time at home. But let's define who is a teenager? What is teenagehood all about? Carol, please help us understand what we mean by teenage. Thank you, Reverend Maggie. Um, it could take maybe about two hours for us to really define. <laughs> but I think what I really want to do is demystify what teenage is because we really get into this space with a lot of fear mm -hmm. a lot of anxiety and even when i work p with parents of seven year olds they tell me you know he's behaving this way how will he be when he's 13 or 15 uh -huh. and so they're never even able to be present in the moment with a seven year old mm -hmm. so to just demystify p uh, the adolescence is that it really a teenage or adolescence i'll keep using you know those words interchangeably mm -hmm. It's a stage of life. It's a season of life, like any other season. Mm -hmm. It has unique changes. Mm -hmm. It has unique uh, characteristics, mm -hmm. just like toddlerhood has, a unique, mm -hmm. has its own unique characteristic. Mm -hmm. And we need to look at it as a stage of transition like any other stage, mm -hmm. but not this really defining moment that we, we, can, we need to go into with a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. We need to arm ourselves. Mm -hmm. We need to be ready. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if we don't fix children early, they'll give us issues in, mm -hmm. in, in um, you know, they give us issues in their teenage. Mm -hmm. So it's a season where a lot is going on, mm -hmm. a lot more. And that is God's way. Mm -hmm. That's how he has designed it, to prepare teenagers to get out of, uh, you know, now for life mm -hmm. in future. Mm -hmm. And so if you're preparing someone to step into life in future, then there's a level of independence that they need. Mm -hmm. There's a level of uh, maturity that they need. So there's a lot of growing that goes on during that stage. Mm -hmm. And from a psychological perspective, um, the levels of dopamine, you know those feel-good hormones? Yes. They are actually lower. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what uh, teenagers do is to be able to increase them so that uh -huh. they can feel good, uh -huh. they get into risky behaviors. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. You, no, no, I'm just listening uh, yeah. in, in an active way. Continue. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to ask something. <laughs> no, no, don't. Yeah, say, don't but say. yeah, so the levels, they are lower. So they need to do things that, um, you know, bring those levels of feel-good mm -hmm. chemicals mm -hmm. higher. And that's why they have tendencies mm -hmm. of getting into risky behaviors. Mm -hmm. So I think it's in terms of just understanding teenage, mm -hmm. it's not a stage to get into with a lot of um, 
fear and anxiety. Mm -hmm. But it's looked at actually as a second window of opportunity because mm -hmm. there's so many things happening. Mm -hmm. And we can still harness so much from this amazing teenager who's just about to get out there. Mm -hmm. And if we are able to focus on let's prepare them to get them out there mm -hmm. as opposed to let's fix them. Let's fix them right now. Let's mm -hmm. fix the things that are not right and fix mm -hmm. them wrong. I mean, and make them right. Mm -hmm. Um, then we approach um, teenage with a lot more level of just being relaxed. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not easy, but even as parents, we need to understand that we also need to grow mm -hmm. as the teenagers are growing. Thank you so much. Amazing. But I have a quick comment here. Mm -hmm. this, uh, uh, we have a top fan. Her name is Angela Wanjuko, and she's saying, I can't wait to delve into this hot topic. Now, uh, with an interested, uh, an interested uh, listener or viewer like that, mm -hmm. we, we need to ask one question. Is the fear real mm -hmm. as a mom? Are there f fears that you have that are real mm -hmm. that you can, you can share? Um, okay. Um, I think I'm, I'm glad that you asked me as a mom because I bring no qualification, no experience uh, textbook wise, I mean, yeah. I can only share from my experiences as a mother raising teenagers, raising young men, for that matter. I think it's, it's very interesting. So I have, I said, my firstborn is 20 years old. And then the twins, uh, my twins are 15 years old. So they are smack in teenage, they're just getting well into teenage. Mm -hmm. And the other one has exited teenage, so to speak, right. in a matter of number of years. I would, I think, with your, f I, what I would say is, with your first child, mm -hmm. the level of anxiety is really high because mm -hmm. we don't want to get it wrong. And mm -hmm. I'm so glad that Carol is the one who said this that we need to realize the window of opportunity that happens with teenagehood because many times we come at it with, oh, we have had horror stories about teenagers. Yes. Teenagers they are becoming, and when your when your preteen starts um, questioning things that you're doing, then you start panicking and you start, oh, this is the dreaded uh, teenagehood we have heard about, yep. and so you're guard is up, your armor is up, and you come at it, guns uh -huh. blazing, uh -huh. and you miss out uh -huh. on the joy of who this person is or who this person is becoming as a teenager. Because what I, I tend to think what's happening is they're beginning to walk from their, who they really are and will be for life. So uh -huh. it's, it's when it's your first time child, you're so trying to do everything by the book and get it right, and uh -huh. you feel that your success as a parent will be measured by the kind of child that you raise. So <laughs> Immediately, you feel like there's any danger of your child sleeping, you're there. You're at you're it. You know, to you're fix trying it, to quarterback yeah. the yes. situation. Uh -huh. And you miss out a lot. Uh -huh. So, I tend to find, and to, to be fair, to be compassionate to ourselves as parents, we Correct. didn't know any better. It's also like the first time when you first time you hold your baby, there's things you didn't know. There are things you thought would be automatic. I'd be a mom. Nobody told you about the emotions that come yeah. with it. Uh -huh. It's the same thing with teenagehood. You, never been a parent to a teenager before. So uh -huh. there's things that you do yeah. that would be... Yeah. Uh, and I like yeah. what you just said, because yeah. it's true. Yeah. You've never been where you are before. You've never been there before. And so, there's yeah. no rehearsal. Yeah. Every you're day... You're learning on the job. You're learning on the job, yeah. and each day counts a lot. Yeah, but and it's different with the other kids. Uh -huh. the, so the second and the third one, I say the other children have the benefit of you're a bit more of an experienced parent. So I'm really enjoying what you're saying in mm -hmm. terms of um, you're looking back and seeing what are some of the things I missed out? Maybe mm -hmm. I could have been too busy and I didn't uh, teach them. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing this as, as an opportunity to teach my children. What I'm hearing is um, a release. Like, you know, there's, there's a way you can look at it mm -hmm. by saying, what is wrong with me? Look, this child does not even do, know how to do one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. But how you're approaching it is with... <laughs> Absolutely no guilt, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is an opportunity I have to teach them something that they didn't know. And I think one of the struggles that can be in this space, uh, Reverend Maggie, when you're asking about struggle, mm -hmm. is parents getting into this space. And then they begin to notice things that their children are not able to do. Mm -hmm. And you get into a place of anxiety, a place of guilt, a place of, I need to fix this. I need to fix this before COVID is over so that uh -huh. now... When COVID is over, now I have a better child. Oh. But approaching it in, with, with a lot of uh, compassion for yourself, mm -hmm. with a lot of, oh, okay, mm -hmm. this guy actually doesn't know how to make his bed. Mm -hmm. 
interesting. Let us train. Okay? <laughs> so you go and you start. Mm -hmm. At whatever age, uh -huh. they could be 15 and they don't know how to make their bed. You can That's start. fine. Uh -huh. That is where we are right now. Uh -huh. So let us train. Uh -huh. Without guilt, uh -huh. with a lot of compassion for myself, uh -huh. let's go in there. Uh -huh. And let's do step one, uh -huh. step two, uh -huh. step three, and this uh -huh. is how a bed is made. Right. And once that is done, you move on to the next thing and you move on to the next thing. So I think the struggle can be more if we are getting into this space with a lot of beating ourselves up because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whether we like it or not, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. we are in the same space, but we're also in each other's hairs. Mm -hmm. Let's just admit, we're in each other's <laughs> hairs and the levels mm -hmm. of irritability mm -hmm. and people getting angry at each other and mm -hmm. snapping around, mm -hmm. they're happening. Mm -hmm. We need to acknowledge that this mm -hmm. is all new for us. Mm -hmm. So even then now you begin to see also those negative things about your children and you're like, Oh, where have I been? And, and then ah. you, were, you, were guilt, you were feeling guilty because you were working. Mm -hmm. Now you're feeling guilty because you haven't prepared your child enough. Yeah. And so that whole space is mm -hmm. not healthy at mm -hmm. all. And, and not so, very comfortable yeah, either. Yeah, for yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think the struggle would be more if we are not compassionate mm -hmm. with, to ourselves and mm -hmm. if we are not looking at it as a second window of opportunity. Where you... We, just think of just one thing that you can teach your child uh -huh. in this season uh -huh. and just go along with that in a way that goes with your pace, uh -huh. goes with, the, with, the, with where you are even mentally and emotionally, uh -huh. but at least, you know, nail one thing that yeah. you can actually teach them, you know. And then you can gain some form of success with that one. Exactly. And talking of pace, mm -hmm. you talked about pace. In another conversation we had talked about the need to recognize that uh, this is not a one-off. Mm. And, and teenagehood, this is, uh, this is a season of adolescence. It's a season. Yes. And that season, it, it takes time. Talk to us about time. Why is time such an important factor in, here, in walking our kids uh, through teenage? Um, I, I'll give an example. One of the examples I use when I'm working with parents is just looking at how we parent. You can either parent as a carpenter or parent as a farmer. Okay, and a carpenter, you know, has very strict timelines. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a real fundi, not, you know, not the ones that sometimes, you know, go like this. <laughs> but, you know, the one that, you know, they, they have a picture of what they want way before they even think about the materials. Mm -hmm. So they have that whole picture. Mm -hmm. So everything else they do, mm -hmm. they do it while looking at that picture in mind. This is what I'm coming up with. This is what I'm coming up with. Uh -huh. So if something is going off a little, mm -hmm. you know, it's anxious. Hey, I need to panel plan back. it. Yes, I need to panel beat it. I need to plan it. Uh -huh. This this is not the right yellow. You know, so do we have teal and turquoise Cheat. and all that? No, we need yeah. an, uh, the correct yellow. Mm -hmm. And so you become so um, set on, your, on the end product that uh -huh. you actually don't enjoy the process. But then when it comes to parenting as a farmer, it's a completely different space. Uh -huh. Because in that space, you're asking yourself, what kind of environment do I need to create here? Yeah. Some of these uh, uh, seeds need to be under the shade, but there are those which actually need to be out there in the sun. Mm -hmm. Is it time to prune? Pruning mm -hmm. is not easy. It's mm -hmm. painful. It's ouch. Uh -huh. there sometimes it's manure, mm -hmm. okay? And manure is messy and is smelly. I don't know where we got that idea that parenting is supposed to be easy. The people who feel that parenting is supposed to be easy want to fix their children mm -hmm. and get over the uncomfortable spaces. Mm -hmm. Now, teenage is one of the most uncomfortable spaces and un uncomfortable seasons of mm -hmm. parenting mm -hmm. because you're dealing with an, a, 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 grow, gr a person who is more grown as opposed to the toddler who would say that at naughty corner or you show them a muiko and you know they comply <laughs> yeah. but in this space you really just have to embrace the characteristics of a farmer and time is one of the things that a farmer really is. i mean things that there's just a season where you don't see anything you already yeah. put the seed in the ground mm -hmm. you have done your manure and everything and it's just a season of not seeing anything come not out, popping of, the anything, popping out yeah. of the ground yeah yeah right so you really need to learn to trust this process of parenting as a, you know, time, in, in, in terms of time, but also just looking at it as a process where you have to continually reflect, am I, maybe I need to change this here. But ultimately with the farmer, they don't have complete control of the final product. What a good thought. That they don't. Yeah. There are other forces at yeah. work. Yeah. And therefore, for me, I mean, being uh, even a church-based program, I mean, the uh, ultimately, uh -huh. this is God who has the results. So yeah. there, it has to be such a work, a work of faith and hope right. as you're parenting your child. 
at whatever age, but even more so during during uh, teenage season, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of, um, they're just about to get out. Mm -hmm. You see, like, like when you think about a bow and an arrow, mm -hmm. so our children are really like arrows, mm -hmm. and you're the bow, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And when it gets really hard, mm -hmm. there's an archer, mm -hmm. and we all know now who the archer is. Mm -hmm. The archer is the one who sees where those children need to go. Wow. He's the one who sees where the arrow needs to go. When it's just about time to launch that child, that's when the bending happens the most. And that's when the teenage, mm -hmm. that's the teenage period mm -hmm. where it's, there's more struggle in, mm -hmm. in that space. Mm -hmm. When it's happening the most, really it's now time to, mm -hmm. to launch to the launch. child. Yeah. yeah. But then it has to be at a space where you know that what you are, mm -hmm. not just a bow, because if you use the word just, mm -hmm. then it minimizes your role. Mm -hmm. But you are a bow, mm -hmm. and you are in a, with, a, with the hands of an archer, and this mm -hmm. arrow, there's someone who knows where it's going. Mm -hmm. So how much more allowing this to be a faith walk mm -hmm. and allowing time to just work out what this child needs to be, you know, in this season of parenting. So we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, so don't go anywhere, we shall now figure out how to walk through the day patiently, in this process of, of parenting our teenagers. Thank you. Welcome guys, thank you so much for staying uh, tuned. And we want to start it up with answering one question that uh, Angela has asked. As a sibling, I have a teenager. How can I walk alongside my teenage sibling? I think, one, it depends on the, the, the level of responsibility that you have been given over uh, your sibling. So if you're supporting them in terms of financially, maybe paying for their fees or living with them, then you're going to take a more, more of a parental role because mm -hmm. parenting is not necessarily giving birth or adopting. or mm -hmm. it's, it's just really a process where are you, what, what level of responsibility do you have mm -hmm. and are you nurturing them? Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, one for me, uh, because I don't have clarity on the specific situation, is what to what extent is the responsibility you have over your sibling. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, because we do have, um, you can still take up the role of a mentor mm -hmm. and just still give them direction where they need direction. Mm -hmm. uh, you may not be able to give consequences mm -hmm. because there's already just that sibling rivalry thing that always mm -hmm. goes on, yeah. especially when people, when uh, teenager, I mean, when you're closer, Closer mm -hmm. to age. So for me, mm -hmm. I, I think you still, you still do have a part to play in terms mm -hmm. of mentoring, mm -hmm. but also the extent into, into which you go into it depends on what level of responsibility you have yeah. over them. Right. Wow, fantastic. I yeah. think we can, we can address that one that yeah. way. Yeah. But if it's something very specific, mm. we, we can, we, uh, Jilla can post it on to us and you can answer it, right? Yes, that would so be great. So it gives a little more clarity. Yes. Okay, thank you so right. much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we want to explore a day at home with our teenagers. More time, a bit of, a lot, a bit of gadgets, mm -hmm. a bit of time on the internet because we, we, we are doing school at home. Mm -hmm. So how has it been for you, Marion? How does it look like to stay at home all day with, with that teenager, two of them, mm -hmm. and a bigger teenager who is 20, and they need to do their work? Mm -hmm. Give, just paint a picture for us. Okay. One of the things that this I can put out there is, Previously, what we have done in the past, we have chosen as a family not to have internet at home, mm -hmm. just because of how much it took from us as from family, from family life and from family time. We, and that's during the school term. So when our kids are in school, mm -hmm. we don't pay for internet. Right. So there's no internet at home. It's inconvenient to us too as parents, because when you come home, you can't quite really work from home because okay. there's no internet. So when you get home, you're just at home, yeah, at home with each yeah. other. Uh -huh. And looking back now, uh -huh. That helped us in many ways because <laughs> now we have to have internet so that the kids can be able to continue with their schooling program. Mm -hmm. So of course, the kids would be like, yeah, we get internet <laughs> now. <laughs> but we parents now, our safety net has <laughs> gone. And so we are finding ourselves even now. As, I mean, and, and to be honest, it's not just children. It's not just the teenagers who struggle with the internet. We too, I mean, now there's internet yeah. 24 hours at home. You're probably doing, yeah. spending more time on your laptop yes. or on your gadgets yes. as well as, an ad, as a parent, tell, you yeah. know? And you don't want that. So one of the things that we quickly, okay, we're in a new space. We, how then do we adapt to 
this new environment, we have to have internet. So that that's the first thing that I want to say as parents of teenagers. Mm. That challenged how we parented our teenagers. Mm -hmm. Our firstborn son would probably, he never had that opportunity of those internet at home during a school term. That never happened for him. But now here we are in this new space. How are we going to parent these children with mm -hmm. the internet there? And so one of the things that we have done is we have kept, tried to keep the same schedule. So mm -hmm. kids, you go to bed at this time when you, during the regular school term, mm -hmm. you're still going to keep that. So you need to be in bed by a certain time because in as much as you're at home, mm -hmm. it may not necessarily be the case that you have more time on your hands. There's more things to be done. There's no right. help coming to do the dishes or cook or do that. We are all at home, so we all have to pull our weight with the housework. So mm -hmm. you go to bed a little earlier. I mean, you go to bed, um, try and keep regular sleeping patterns. So none of that mm -hmm. sleeping at midnight because you are up on the internet happening. So go to bed, wake up in the morning. So the twins, were age 15 are the ones, wake up in the morning, uh, have your breakfast, get ready for school because then they have to be logged into class by a certain time. So you have to make sure your device was charged there's none of that. Mm -hmm. Your device, oh, we can't attend class. We ran out of charge. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Get yeah. your school books, have to put get them that on in the place. table. Uh -huh. we, have, we all are in a small space, so we all have to be at the table together. Uh -huh. um, sit down, get ready for school, log into your classes. But now one of the interesting things that's happened is they, have, they actually have more to do because it's your day for school. You have schoolwork, but mm -hmm. you also have chores. So uh -huh. everybody has a day when it's your day to keep the house clean. So they're Star Wars fans, so we have we call it being the Jedi. So okay. everybody has a day when they're the Jedi. You're the one who will wake up. You have to mop the house. Mm -hmm. You have to clean the bathroom. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure the house, I mean, dust the surfaces. Every, just do the chores that need to be done. Mm -hmm. There's dishes. Everybody has their schedule of, are you washing breakfast, lunch, or dinner dishes? Mm -hmm. So you have that on top of your schoolwork, attending mm -hmm. your classes mm -hmm. and doing in your assignments mm -hmm. and handing them in. And also find time to, so one of the things that they have picked up is cycling. They've, mm -hmm. they did a lot of cycling when they were little, and so that's one of the things I'm thankful for that they have developed a passion for is in the afternoon, they want to go cycling together as brothers, so they'll go out mm -hmm. and ride their bikes and probably try and do something like 30 kilometers or mm -hmm. just stuff like that. Wow. So how do you make all of that fit into your time? And that's why I was saying learning, the learning that's happening right now is not just about academics. Yes, there's now, more than that. There's more than that. They're having to learn how to manage their time. Mm -hmm. Your assignment is due by 11 p.m. or whatever time it is has been sent. You have to do it, mm -hmm. but you also have to do the dishes. Um, yes. Nobody's going to go into that kitchen and do the dishes for you. So you need to figure out when you're going to wash the dishes. Mm -hmm. You need to figure out when you're going to be the Jedi, when you're mm -hmm. going to get your housework done. So it's not necessarily the case that they are... Um, have more time on their hands. Now they are being challenged to, we are all being challenged to manage our mm -hmm. time better. So mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that when Carol said about the window of opportunities, looking at these seasons that we are in, even teenage seasons, mm -hmm. and then figuring out what's the opportunity for me there as a parent and how do I use it? It's true when you said that someone's 15 years old and know how to make the bed. Okay, am I going to fret about it or am I going to work? It is what it is. Mm, right. <laughs> Let us roll up our Leave shirts, it. sleeves and this work is with how it. you make a bed. Let yes. it from today yeah. on, this yeah. is the standard yeah. I want to see. Yeah. So it's picking up from seeing the opportunity in the moment and mm -hmm. working with it. And I must say, I'm so glad you said that because one of the things that I think we miss out as parents of teenagers, mm -hmm. having raised a teenager to adult, mm -hmm. to becoming a young adult now and raising other teenagers, is we really miss out on seeing who they are. They are wonderful, but their personalities, mm -hmm. their attributes, their talents, their gifts, just who they are as people, because we are so fixated on teenagers are terrible, that you actually end up missing out on who, the potential of who they are becoming. So I'm so glad you brought that out as a, as a oh. parent of a teenager. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. J just before we, we move on, mm -hmm. I wanted to capture how do you keep the kids focused? Mm -hmm. Allocate time for everything. So there'll be a time for, okay, you to go to your phone and you want to go through your social media, there's a time for So everything is, so it's not um, by decree, like a hard, no, you yeah. cannot do social media, yeah. never, ever, uh -huh. don't. It's, okay, this is a part of your life, how then do we manage it? Like I said, we didn't have internet before, now we have to have it, mm -hmm. so now how do we manage this resource that we have? So even the same thing with the phone, okay, great, you want to do social media, mm -hmm. it's there. But this is the time to do it. You can't be on your phone until midnight that you are just chatting people. So when it's bedtime, phones remain in the sitting room. You don't go to bed with any electric. You don't go to, you don't go to bed with gadgets. Uh -huh. and it's the time for your gadgets to do that. And then the other thing also is just trying to use our time constructively as a family. So one of the other things that has worked well for us is evenings we... Um, 
have started to read a book of the Bible together. So that helps reduce the time that you can be on a gadget. Oh, okay. Both for us as parents <laughs> and for the children. Because mm -hmm. what we do is um, everybody has a day. So in the same way you have a day to be the person who cleans the house, you also have a day when you're the one to prepare the study. So, mm -hmm. for example, we've been reading through the book of Romans. You take, we're reading Romans chapter 5 today. You take the Bible. Go and read it. Mm -hmm. Come and ask us questions. Come and facilitate that discussion. Uh -huh. Yeah, at your level. We'll uh -huh. take it at whatever level you present uh -huh. it to us. Uh -huh. But it's been interesting because even in doing that, then the conversations, these questions that come up, and again, like you said, having kids, teenagers, it's, it's really its own special thing because then you can really have conversations with them when you engage them. Yeah. And I need to say this carefully because I have boys. They're not like the most talkative people <laughs> in the world. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it's great just to sit there and have a conversation, ask questions, get them, get to hear how they're processing the yeah. Bible. Uh -huh. Sometimes they'll say something like, I think God was, God was not fair when he did this. And you're like, interesting. Let me hear why you think he was not fair. Yeah. And just working through uh -huh. those questions with them, hearing how they're processing things. Uh -huh. That's been a blessing, but it's forced us to have to do things together, which is a good thing. So mm -hmm. one of the ways to manage social media is accept it. That's a fight. When we're not going to fight that, but how are we going to manage it so that then it's beneficial mm -hmm. and you still have some level of freedom and re learning, help you navigate your newfound freedoms and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. that's, that's so amazing mm -hmm. that the kids can be involved. And actually, you've done a lot of training. Okay. But because you're training them how to develop a, a, a study right. yeah. for, uh, that, that they can lead the whole family through. Mm. And that captures the whole place of spiritual development, okay. that you're in charge yeah, of that. We have uh, yeah. new opportunities to right. mm. work with our teenagers in a way we didn't do before. Right. Yeah. 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 Carol, yes. um, educate us a little bit. Mm. If I am not this parent who sees this opportunity, how can I seize it? Because we say it's never too late. Any time is a good time to start. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I could be this parent who was never that engaged. Mm -hmm. Now I am frustrated by the fact that I have these kids all, you know, all with, with myself. Mm -hmm. And maybe um, a single mom. Mm -hmm. how, how can I navigate that space? I, I, for me, I think uh, self-awareness is very important. Where am I at? I have seen uh, maybe I have not trained the way I was supposed to train. And I said it earlier. Release it. Mm -hmm. I mean, have compassion for yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. But it's so much about what are you telling yourself. Mm -hmm. Even as a single mom, what mm -hmm. are you telling yourself about mm -hmm. your situation? Mm -hmm. um, are there, uh, is there a sense of I'm alone in this? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of perception of I'm alone as opposed to, well, this is the situation I'm in. What can I do? Can I bring in, uh, you know, community around me? I, 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 I stay with my son. We mm -hmm. are in a co-parenting um, space with mm -hmm. the father. Mm -hmm. So he's, we are not parenting him in the same house together. Yeah. And, you know, he gets stunts to go to his dad's to, and, and, and come to my place. But then uh, in this season, I just picked him and we moved to my sister's house mm -hmm. uh, where now kids can play together. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more company. In fact, now when you're talking about training, mm -hmm. I find that I'm training him better now mm -hmm. because there are more eyes and there's more accountability in the mm -hmm. things that he needs to do. Mm -hmm. And he is accountable to just not me, but the others. So I think this, the, 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 that seizing the moment is just really looking at your situation, not necessarily as a negative thing or a limitation, but what it is, what can I do? What can mm -hmm. I do in this moment? How can I make the most of it? And I know every situation is different, but I think if we um, have higher levels of self-awareness, we are aware how am I interpreting my situation? How am I interpreting my child's behavior? Because also even in the space of uh, parenting alone, one of the, the, the things that can happen is every behavior you see, you see in the light of, it's because there's no father in the, in the, in, in the space. But that, that could be um, uh, uh, what, the things that I call interpretation. Mm -hmm. The conversations you have with yourselves about your child's behavior. Yeah. What conversations are you having with yourself? Because they will determine how you will feel mm -hmm. and they will determine how you react to, mm -hmm. to the child. So mm -hmm. if you're able to step back and separate those two things. In fact, I like to tell parents, ask when you see a child's behavior and you feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. You know, like where I come from, they say you feel something like hua. You know, <laughs> so you ask yourself, why have I felt like that? Mm -hmm. What in this moment is mine? What in this 
moment, in this anger, is mm -hmm. it mine mm -hmm. to own or is it the child? Is mm -hmm. it the child who has triggered it, mm -hmm. triggered something that's already in me? Mm -hmm. So what do I need to work on? Mm -hmm. So part of seizing the moment for me this season is really just to go deep into yourself mm -hmm. and have a self-awareness of what are some things that trigger me? Mm -hmm. What am I worrying about? Mm -hmm. What are things that I worry about? What can I do about them? Mm -hmm. There are those things that you have no control over mm -hmm. and so you invite peace mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. to be able to the serenity to be like okay this mm -hmm. is something i cannot change mm -hmm. but god give me the is it the wisdom or the courage yeah. to change the things that i can yeah and so just being able to separate that and then of course the most important is the wisdom to know the difference between what i can change and what and, i can't change. yes so for me season wow. the moment is just going back inside of yourself and really beginning to to explore that inner space. Yeah. What do I need to work on and you know, how do I need to change? I think that's very empowering to parents yeah. to listen to that and hear that I can do a self audit and I can see where I need to pay attention to mm. so that I can be a better parent in this yeah. season. Yeah, so I can provide the right environment because children soak in mm -hmm. what we pour out. Right. And what we pour out really comes from here. From so right it doesn't inside. matter how many uh, tips and tools you gather out there. Uh -huh. It, what really matters is the environment in which you are implementing those tools. And that environment is really what's inside. So if you don't work on what is inside, which mm -hmm. is a process, mm -hmm. then what the child gets is just, mm -hmm. well, mom was really, really angry. Me, all I saw was the anger. I didn't mm -hmm. see, there was no lesson there, wow. you know? Just the so they just focus on, mm -hmm. you know, they focus on your emotion as opposed to the lesson that they need to learn. A good insight. I, I, re I really, I just like, that is just gold star right there, what Carol yeah. said, because I, um, one of the things I have learned on my journey as a mother to teenagers is um, how um, the issue of control, I think, is what stresses us as parents. I think one of the things that happens as a parent of a teenager is you start realizing how little control, you start seeing control basically slipping away Out from of your you, fingers. you know? Yes. And rightly so, that's the way it should be. This, mm -hmm. is an, a, this person will become an individual and an adult and will need to function in society. Mm -hmm. Over and above that, mm -hmm. this is a person who is created in God's image and whom God created for his own glory. Mm -hmm. Not for me, my glory as a parent. I think many times that's where we get it wrong as, a, as parents. Yes. yes. Just, I mm -hmm. mean, personally, self-assessment. You said we need to self-audit as parents. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things for me that was an aha moment is this I'll be judged on how as a parent by the outcome of my children. So uh -huh. these children are a mini extension of my glory. And uh -huh. God is, that's not who God created them to be. He created them for his glory. Mm -hmm. And once you start realizing this is, God has a purpose for this person. Mm -hmm. I am a steward. Mm -hmm. I am just, my responsibility is to raise them to the place where they can fully function to bring glory to God. Raise them to bring glory, to glorify God. Right. Then the issue mm -hmm. of control starts you start getting a bit comfortable with losing control because you know ultimately father god mm. they belong to you mm -hmm. i am a steward and god begins and praying for your children is also very powerful because not because it changes them many times we come at prayers like lord change that child yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. it changes your perception of how you see your children mm. yeah and then you're able to know what are the things that really matter for this teenager one of the things that um i have become aware of as a mother is i need to parent this child for values. I need to ch help this child understand, this teenager understand um, who they are, because God has gifted them with talents, abilities, attributes, competencies that are unique to them that they will need to use to, that they will fully live to function in the purpose that God has called them to. For some, the children who are born, they wake up, they play a violin, and it's amazing for the rest of their life. Their, their gifts are overt. You yes, see, like, this yes. is a talented sportsman or an athlete, or your child is a talented musician or academic, and those are the ones whom the world celebrates. They probably won't struggle as much to find out who they are, their identity. Mm -hmm. But they're those for whom their gifts are not as overt. Right. But they're still gifted in some way. And it's to help them realize, like, if your child was the most compassionate, God has gifted them with an amazing gift of compassion. It may not be something that the world will ever call out, mm -hmm. but imagine that is an attribute and a gift that God has deliberately and intentionally placed in this world. It is my duty as a parent to help my child see the 
benefit and the blessing of being compassionate right. and to parent that in them even as a teenager your teenager mm -hmm. could probably be very compassionate mm -hmm. but you're so fearful that you're losing control that you're missing out in all the wonderful aspects of this compassionate teenager yeah. that you have in your house right. I so i think you. that's one of the things that for me has been a real paradigm shift in yeah in raising teenagers yeah, yeah. wow and, and our time is so well spent carol <laughs> yes so what when 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 you sh share a piece of wisdom with us mm -hmm. uh also give us like a, a parting shot mm -hmm. and encourage a parent who may be feeling uh, I actually have learned something and I can uh, uh, seize that word is good and it's a good word seize the opportunity and do something and and make this time count for me as a parent yeah of a teenager yes uh, I mean I'm, I'm really loving the flow of this conversation and your authenticity in just seeing how you realized that there was a space of control and you are as, you are using your child as uh, you know an extension of your ego yeah. and just being able to realize that you know what a gift that is just being aware, starting to have a sense of awareness, because I, I like to use this phrase, this sort of a quote, when I work with parents is that unless you are fulfilled, mm -hmm. you will use your children to complete you. You will teach them how to live with your fears, how to live with your emptiness, mm -hmm. and how to live with your anxieties. Mm -hmm. But that's just one part, part one. Mm -hmm. Part two is all the while unaware that you are doing so. Mm -hmm. And that's the tragedy that we are unaware. And so when you come to that space of awareness and mm -hmm. you're like, ooh, mm -hmm. I'm being a control freak or, or I'm, I'm feeling anxious and I'm feeling fearful, that is one step. And that's usually like 50% of the journey, mm -hmm. just being aware that, oh, this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Then the second one is where is it coming from? Mm -hmm. So just being able to even just sit and like, God, this is how I'm feeling and I do not understand where it's coming from. He is the light. Mm -hmm. You know, shine the light in those spaces that I need to work on. Mm -hmm. So that now once I start working on then, one of the things that I have learned with my son who is 11 right now, mm -hmm. and we're getting into a space of a lot of uh, power struggles, mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm understanding also that that's the space that he needs to assert himself. You know, right. you know, like we were saying earlier, even before the show, that sometimes we forget that preteen is also really, really tough. Mm -hmm. We also think we always think about adolescent being yes. this thing, but preteen is when now they are really transitioning from those. Yes, mommy, you know, all lovey dovey to okay, now I have my voice. And you know, do you know one of the things that for me I have learned to do is when I'm having those. Um, power struggle moments with my son, I just sit still and breathe and say, God, I need wisdom for this moment. Wow. Just saying, just drawing wisdom for that moment. Mm -hmm. And it, does it always work? Sometimes I don't know. Sometimes it gets explosive. Yeah. But later I'm like me, I prayed. Yeah. So if I, f I, I messed it up, it would mm. just give me wisdom to fix it now. You oh, know, right. so it's yeah. like continually drawing. I yeah. think the parting shot for me here is that it is possible to continually mm -hmm. draw from God mm -hmm. and look, looking at that um, from, a, from the archer and the bow perspective mm -hmm. like because that. he's the one who sees. Mm -hmm. He's the one who created these children. Mm -hmm. He actually created the purpose first mm -hmm. and then he created our children mm -hmm. for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Who am I to start being a control freak here using mm -hmm. my own insecurities mm -hmm. to complete my child? Wow. How much more easier can I just sit and breathe in and out and draw from God? I'm like, this one is your child and there's a direction he's going mm -hmm. and now me in this moment mm -hmm. give me wisdom oh, give me wisdom nice. if i need to walk away from this push and pull uh -huh. it's okay because that's another thing we want to assert our authority uh -huh. i am the parent in this house mm. sometimes you just walk away from it so that you can go and uh, really just have that time to draw wisdom. Right. So I think there's a place where we, 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 we need to realize that we don't have to fix everything as it happens in the moment, mm -hmm. but we can continually draw wisdom mm -hmm. in the moment mm -hmm. to be able to handle those very explosive moments wow. that happen. So well said. Yeah. Thank you so much. Kara, I appreciate that. Yeah. Marion, uh, give us uh, a parting shot. Encourage a parent mm -hmm. who hasn't figured out how to get the kids away from their distractions, and how to work out a schedule that fits teenagers. Remembering that now they have grown, they're no longer kids. Now they are maturing, and like we said a, a little earlier, they are moving towards autonomy. Yeah. And you want to walk them through that journey of autonomy so they can come, become adults. So uh, give us a short parting shot. Okay. Um, I think my experience in motherhood, and again, I am a mother of boys, young men, is one of the things that I have drawn strength from is that I try and model my parenting 
from the ultimate parent. So looking to ad looking not just to how did our parents raise us or how does the world say we should raise children, but Lord, how have you parented me mm -hmm. as my parent, as the ultimate father? Mm -hmm. And trying to um, just replicate that model even for my children. Um, I have found that to be beneficial because some of the things like, for instance, we have we tend our society trends to focus on academics for children. So even in, when we talk about education, our children when will our children open school so that they go back to education? Because mm -hmm. they are falling behind. Because yeah. they are falling behind mm -hmm. and they won't be able to sit their national exams. Yes, yes that is a very valid conversation. Mm -hmm. But also as a parent, my 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 worldview should be much bigger. Mm -hmm. It's not just about opening schools so that my children go back and sit an exam and continue on with life. I think there is a place for me to look at education more broadly mm -hmm. in terms of what does this child need to learn? Mm -hmm. What would the Lord have me as the parent of this child mm -hmm. teach this child and guide mm -hmm. this child? Mm -hmm. And I think that would fix some of the issues we have in society if we focused more on teaching our children values mm -hmm. In the same way, mm -hmm. we place emphasis on academics, which is also equally important. That is not to minimize the place of mm -hmm. academics, mm -hmm. but it is also to say we need to just up the ante a bit more and focus on values, raising mm -hmm. our children for values. And that's some of the things mm -hmm. that we can do in this season and mm -hmm. we can use our time more meaningfully. So it's a gift to have your children at mm -hmm. home right now, undistracted by mm -hmm. schooling, waking up mm -hmm. to catch the school bus at 4 a.m. or mm -hmm. fighting traffic to get home mm -hmm. to your children. Mm -hmm. We are all at home, so to speak, in this moment. Maybe these are places to redeem the season and mm -hmm. teach values to our children, teach them mm -hmm. compassion, mm -hmm. kindness, teach them how to be brothers and sisters to each other, teach them how to care for each other's mm -hmm. siblings, mm -hmm. teach them how it is to live in a family, mm -hmm. whatever your construct of a family is. Mm -hmm. How do we have dignity for each other? How do we show dignity for human beings? Because some of these things, the issues we see in society, it's, it's more as a function of the socialization that happened in the home. Mm -hmm. And we have a unique opportunity as parents to begin to do that one thing. I like how Carol said, just one, one thing. It's like yeah. we don't have to fix the whole world in one go. Yeah. But what's one thing I can do with my teenager right now mm -hmm. to teach them? What's the one value that I want them to come away with from? And you'd be amazed how mm -hmm. God takes that faithful effort and multiplies mm -hmm. it into something great in the life of your teenager. Thank you so much. Yeah. Amazing. Let's anchor this in scripture. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a node traditional favorite psalm that you yeah. all like. Uh, and Carol alluded to it, that we need to draw from God daily. Mm -hmm. And the Bible reminds us in Psalms 127 that unless the Lord builds a house, unless the Lord helps us bring up these children, the archer, like you called him, he is at the back of our minds. We know we are not the ones in control. We cede control to this God who builds the house for us. The builders will labor in vain. As a parent, we don't want labor in vain. We want to invite God so that our labors are not, uh, they won't amount to naught. Unless the, the Lord watches over the city, unless the Lord over, watches over our children, uh, we, guard, we start guard in vain. And in vain we will, we will fret, we will rise up early, we will sleep late. Uh, we will stay there trying to seed, uh, to, to seize instead of seeding control so that our kids can grow. And uh, the Lord is inviting us actually even right now as parents to remember that he's there for us. He is our constant. We can go back to him and can, he can help us regain mm. uh, that space of control of ourselves mm. so we can lead uh, this generation in God's real way. So thank you so much, ladies. I cannot thank you enough for your time and your invaluable insights. We keep learning and we keep be feeling very, very blessed. Thank you so much. So guys, thank you so much for keeping tuned. Thanks for sharing this one hour or so with us and we look back to, to next week. Thank you. God bless you.